United Airlines Flight 232 takes off from Denver Stapleton International Airport, bound for Chicago. Very fortunate weather-wise. As we're flying along and everything is smooth as can be and every, every the service is humming and we're all working as a team, out of the blue, here comes this explosion. I mean, it was a huge, loud explosion. But passenger Rod Vetter, a seasoned traveler, isn't phased. My first thought was a bomb went off. Then I realized that it had depressurized, so it wasn't a bomb. Then I realized that it was probably an engine blowing. And my first thought was, OK, good, we got off a little late maybe, and we're going to get right into Chicago uh, right on time, because a DC-10 can certainly fly with two engines. The explosion happens at 3.16 p.m., an hour and seven minutes into the flight. I began to realize how serious it was when I saw the flight crew come back. Uh, and, and they were trying to look out the windows, the passenger windows, just to observe what was going on with the, as much as they could with the physical condition of the airplane. Attention getting statement of the day is that I can't control the airplane. And the airplane was in a descending right turn. And uh, he had the control wheel all the way to the left and all the way back in his lap for a maximum climbing left turn, which you can't do in the air. Controls can't move that far. And that's when I said, I've got it. With expert airmanship, Captain Haynes wrestles the plane back to a wings level position. Without its steering, that aircraft started to roll over on its back and it would have continued to roll over and dive into the ground and be destroyed, except for the fact that at that moment, Al Haynes reached over and he advanced the throttle on the right wing, and he retarded the throttle on the left wing. And that asymmetric thrust just picked the wing up very slowly and steadied the aircraft. But United 232 still has monumental problems. From the cockpit, pilots call the flight attendant's phone to make sure the cabin and passengers are prepared for an emergency landing. The situation is grave. The plane has lost all of its hydraulic fluid. Hydraulics in a modern large jet airplane is the lifeblood of the airplane. It is how you physically move the flight controls. It, it provides the muscle to move these very large surfaces against very fast moving air in a controlled manner. We were keeping it in the air, I'll put it that way. Control, no. We were just trying to keep it flying. It was doing what it wanted to do. In the past, bad communication has led to disaster. Now, all hope is riding on teamwork to avoid a catastrophic outcome. Al Haynes manages to crack a joke with air traffic controller Kevin Bachman. You're cleared to land on any runway. <laughs> you want to be particular, make it a runway, huh? I was asking him to do this and do that and do that. Then he kind of fell into the pattern of what to do. And we didn't have to say so much anymore. As United 232 approaches the airport, the pilots dump as much fuel as they can. This lightens the plane, which increases their ability to control it. Meantime, in the cabin, senior flight attendant Jan Brown, following FAA protocol, advises parents to place lap children on the floor. Those are kids under two years old without paid seats. She's about to announce that passengers should brace for impact when Captain Haynes overrides her on the PA. There was an announcement that this is going to be a, a, a seriously difficult landing. The plane is traveling at 247 miles per hour, 100 miles an hour too fast for a DC-10 to land. Without hydraulic fluid, the controls that would normally slow the plane down don't work. And because they can't be properly configured, the ground proximity warning system doesn't realize the pilots are trying to land. It begins to sound, adding to the chaos in the cockpit. The left wing was coming up, and we wanted the left wing down. So we said left, 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 left. I never thought we'd be fine because we were going too fast, and our rate of descent was too big, and I knew something was going to, to happen. At exactly 4 p.m., 44 minutes after the problem began, a violent impact. As if it were a toy, and went rocketing down the runway at 250 miles an hour. I heard 
explosions and loud noises, flashes of light, and that had to be with the plane breaking apart. Al could have kept telling us that it would be rough, but I, I could never in my wildest dreams have imagined smashing into the earth the way we did. As the jumbo jet careens out of control, it breaks into pieces and fires erupt. It's hard to fathom anyone surviving the flames and the thick black smoke. and the equipment's coming off. Okay. Uh, you can isolate this. 